Shkoyach. Okay, two nights ago we were learning about the Malachas of Shabbos. And we discussed that the definition of Malacha doesn't mean work. It means creativity, because Hashem didn't work. Therefore, you can technically work a lot in Shabbos, schlepping things, and you're not transgressing any work. But if you do creativity, which is one of the 39 Malachas that the, the Torah says you're not allowed to do, so then that's called desecration of Shabbos because Hashem created the world in six days, stopped creating on the Shabbos, so therefore we create six days, seventh day is forbidden to create. We also discussed that if something is biblical, so then if you do it intentionally and you were warned, you get stoned, skila. If you did it intentionally, you weren't warned, so then it's called kardis. Hashem kills you younger. And if you did it accidental, and we explained last time, that the accidental doesn't mean I don't know what I'm doing. I leaned against the wall by mistake it went on. It means I know exactly what I'm doing, but I thought what I'm doing is allowed. In other words, you either forgot it was Shabbos, like we say, you woke up in the morning, you flicked the switch, you didn't even remember it was Shabbos. You know what you're doing, but you forgot, you thought you're allowed to. Or you didn't know this is forbidden to do on Shabbos. And then the last thing we said also, if a, a Rav tells you you're allowed to do it, and you're not allowed to do it, so then that's, that's also coke shake. Okay, now, <clears throat> the chachum, what? One leaning on the wall, it's nothing effective. It's called misasik. No. You don't bring a carbon no, 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 no carbon, no nothing. I mean, don't make a habit of doing it. No, of course, no. We said that you did it unintentionally. No, if you did it in a way that you don't know what you're doing, like we said, you're walking in the street and by mistake you stepped on an ant, or, or uh, you lean against the switch and by mistake the light goes on, so then that's not shagig. Shagig biblically means I know what I'm doing, but I think I'm allowed to do it. So either you forgot it was Shabbos, you call it unintentional. Uh, yeah, but I'm saying it. Unintentional means when they lean against the wall and the light goes on, it's also called unintentional yeah, in English. Okay. But that's not shaykhig in Allah. That's nothing. Also, so also in English, shaykhig means unintentional, accidental and intentional. Okay. Now, the Chachamim, the Torah said, Ushmartim is Mishmarti. What's wrong? Huh? Inadvertent <laughs> is misasi, correct. But again, that's not shaygig. Shaygig means I know what I'm doing, but I think I'm allowed to do it. Now, the Torah says you have to make a fence around the Torah. The Chamur Abulgedu Shmartim is Mishmarti. You have to make a fence around the Torah. As they say, when you meant make a fence around the Torah, you have a safer Torah. It's much safer. The Torah is much safer. Okay, now, so the Chachamim were given the responsibility by the Torah, not only the permission, but the responsibility to make fences around the Torah. Now, there's three <coughs> types of what's called shvus. Shvus is when it's rabbinically forbidden. There's three categories, what, what's called shvus, or shvus in plural, by Rebbe Shabbos. Something which might give you an impression that you're doing something biblically wrong. To give you an example. Um, you're not allowed to squeeze liquid out of a fruit on Shabbos. <clears throat> biblically, that only applies to two fruits, olives and grapes, where the liquid is more valuable than the fruit. Wine is more valuable than the grape, and oil is much more valuable than the, than the olive. So biblically, you're only not allowed to squeeze uh, grapes and olives. The Chachamim came along, and they said, you know, people are going to see you squeezing lemons and, and orange juice and all that. People are going to think, okay, what's the difference between this and that? So it looks biblical, even though it's not, because only those two things. So therefore, the Chum is said you're not allowed to do. Um, or another part of this category is, we will discuss more as we learn on, the Torah says you only hire for Shabbos if it's Melechus Machshavis. Melechus Machshavis means, number one, it has to be an intentional work. 
It has to be the normal way of doing it. The normal way of doing a malacha, then you're biblically obligated. If somebody does it a different way than normal, that's only rabbinically forbidden. But it looks biblically forbidden. I'll give you an example. <clears throat> On Shabbos, it's forbidden to write two letters. If you write two letters, you're biblically obligated. But that's really biblically when you write with the hand that you normally write with. If a normal a guy that normally writes with his right hand, and then Shabbos they'll write two letters with the left hand, it's not biblically forbidden because it's not the normal way of writing it. Okay? If I turn on a light, normally you do it with your fingers. If I kick the light open, it's not the normal way of doing it. Unless if it's a foot lamp, you know, you step on a the pedal, then if you do it with your foot, that's the normal way of doing it. One second. So for instance, for a right-handed person, writing with the left hand is not the normal way of writing. So it's only rabbinically forbidden. Why is it? Because you're still writing, right hand, left hand. I mean, so it's, it's very similar. It, it resembles a, a biblical malachas, so therefore it's rabbinically forbidden. Therefore, it's very practical then. What happens, that guy has to, again, the only reason somebody belongs in a hospital is to have a baby. So somebody is going to, into the hospital, a woman is going into the hospital to have a baby in Shabbos, and they have to sign papers. So obviously you're allowed to because a woman having a baby is called life endangering situation. But if the woman could, to minimize the desecration of Shabbos, instead of signing it with her right hand, she should sign it with her left hand. Because then it's only rabbinically forbidden. So it's just less of a, of a desecration of Shabbos. But if somebody's a left-handed, <laughs> then he has to write it with his right hand. What happens some say, I mean, that tricks and be dexterous, they write with both hands. Right. So in any hand they write with this called normal writing. So this is, again, so these three concepts are rabbinically forbidden because they resemble a biblical malacha. Either, like we said, squeezing oranges and lemons versus grapes and olives, or um, you do it a different way than the normal way of doing it. So then it's only rabbinic. What? No, no, no. Driving, everybody does with, the, with both hands. No, Marshall, everybody says this difference of right hand and left hand is only about writing. Because people do things with the right, both hands. People drive with both hands. They go this way, this way, you know, or they hold. And, 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 oh. and, uh, It could be both. It's writing and survey. What? Yeah. If you're in a hospital where there's a lot of from Jews giving birth on Shabbos, and they know already that, uh, yeah, go to some Hicks town where most people live, by the way, and tell them, I can't sign the pay. The sales tell you, you know what? Then you're not having a baby. <laughs> Come back next week. What? Yeshiva would be good. Yeshiva would be good, right. Okay, that's, um, that's one type of rabbinic prohibition, chacham and forbid on Shabbos. Second category of shvusim is it might lead you to do something biblical. You're not allowed to do something because normally when people do this, it leads them, you'll see in the examples, it's very simple it will lead them to maybe become a biblical thing. For instance, writing, like we said, is forbidden on Shabbos. Normally when people do business, you write. You write down things. Yeah? So you're not allowed to do business even if you're not going to write. Why? Because you might come to write. Because this is a thing which is normal. I'll give you a simple example of this also. In certain games that you keep score. For instance, let's say Scrabble. Scrabble, you keep score. You know how many word points you get from the word. So therefore, on Shabbos, you're not allowed to play Scrabble. Why can't you play Scrabble on Shabbos? Because you might come to write, because normally when you play the game, people write. You're not allowed to do business on Shabbos. 
I can't sell you anything on Shabbos, even if you're not going to pay me until after Shabbos. Why? Because normally when people do business, they write down, you took it, I ordered it, whatever it is. And if not, then you put it on your phone, which is also writing, by the way. So uh, all these types of things uh, would be forbidden. Um, Mux is also but that. Uh, part of this is telling a non-Jew to do a malacha for you on Shabbos, because if a guy does things for you on Shabbos, then you'll come to do it yourself. You know, whatever. So that's the second category of what the, what the rabbis forbid to do on Shabbos, because it might lead you to do something right. Therefore, all you're not allowed to give gifts on Shabbos. You're not allowed to make raffles on Shabbos. There's a lot of things you're not allowed to do on Shabbos because these things will bring you to maybe come do something biblical. Uh, another example... Um, Shkhanor, the Al-Trebbe doesn't bring it down because that sif is missing al Trebbe Shkhanor, but Shkhanor says you're not allowed to do raffles on Shabbos. You have to know how to do it, but normal raffles on Shabbos you can't do. What? But how about like last week, like, I need to do raffles for us to do something. Good, good question. Now, I'll give you another example. Certain things you're not allowed to, uh, you can't ride a, I'll give you an example. The Chum said, you're not allowed to ride a horse on Shabbos. Hmm. It's rabbinic. Biblically, you're not doing anything. You're not allowed to ride a horse on Shabbos. Why? Because when they used to ride horses, they would rip off a, a branch from a tree to use as a whip. So when you ride a horse, you might come to whip. Ah, there's no trees around. It doesn't matter. Chum said, you can't ride a horse on Shabbos. Why did they make that decree? Because you might come, or it says you're not allowed to swim on Shabbos. There's a lot of other issues involved. But one of the things that why you said you're not allowed to, because you might build a raft. Years ago, people swim. They, 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 they built a raft. See, that, that's biblically forbidden, building, construction, and Shabbos. So therefore, the Chacham forbid, and we see as we go along, there's a lot of things that the Chacham forbid because it might bring you to biblical. So one is, you might make a mistake to do something biblical because you're squeezing oranges, which is the same thing as squeezing grapes. Second reason, it might lead you to come to a biblical malacha. And then there's a third category. It's not in the spirit of Shabbos. It's called not in the spirit of Shabbos. Because the Chachamim say, as a dover, you shouldn't pursue your business on Shabbos. You shouldn't talk like you would on a weekday. So it's, it's rabbinic. So therefore, the Chachamim say, you're not allowed to do certain things, and there's a lot of things that we'll learn that you're not allowed to do because it's not in the spirit of Shabbos. Or, for instance, you're doing things that are not necessary for Shabbos. So if you're going to do work for after Shabbos, even though what you're doing is allowed, but it's not in the spirit of Shabbos. Shabbos is supposed to rest, spend time with the family, learn. I'll give you an example. On Shabbos, you're not allowed to wash dishes that you don't need for after Shabbos. Okay, you finish lunch Shabbos afternoon, you're not going to be eating any more meals at home, you're going to show for shalashudas, whatever. You're not allowed to wash the dishes. Now, halachically, if you use cold water, I'm saying biblically, use cold water, according to most opinions, liquid soap, and you don't use a sponge, so you're not desecrating Shabbos. I mean, what am I take? Take water with a little liquid soap, and then washing the dish, what's the problem with it? The answer is, Friday night for Shabbos morning, I could wash the dishes because I need them on Shabbos. But if I'm not using the dishes on Shabbos, why, why should I be washing dishes? I'm doing extra things on Shabbos that I'm not supposed to do. What? If somebody doesn't like the way it looks, and they follow them, they can... Now, logically, they can cover it, they can put it inside the oven if the, door light, if the light doesn't go on, but you can't wash dishes. You can't put it just in a dishwasher. If you stack them in the dishwasher that they're ready to, to ready to go Saturday night by pressing the button, then you're not allowed to. Because again, you're preparing it, setting up in a way that right after Shabbos you press the dishwasher. No. Unless it says unless if you're in a place where there's a lot of bugs and this and it attracts so you're gonna have 
a lot of bugs in the house, then you could rinse them. You can't wash them, but you could rinse them. Because then you're not doing it for after Shabbos. You can't do it from one Shabbos to the next either. Let's say I have a set of Shabbos dishes. I don't use them during the week. I'm going to, I finish lunch Shabbos afternoon, I'm going to go wash the dishes and put them away for next Shabbos. So Shabbos to Shabbos, but you still can't. Because this Shabbos, you're doing something, which is extra that you don't need to do. Um, yeah. Or for instance, on Shabbos, you're not allowed to feed animals that don't belong to you. Animals that belong to you, you have an obligation biblically to take care of. They're yours, you have to take care of. You have a dog, you have to feed the dog. But stop to feed animals on Shabbos that don't belong to you, that you're not allowed to do. Why? They're not your animals, you're not obligated. Why are you working extra for something that you don't need to do on Shabbos? Are you allowed to learn a mapa? You can, if you... Even though there's going to be birds coming and eating. But that's not your intention, is to give it to the birds. But the only thing you have to be careful with shaking out a tablecloth in the wind, you have the malacha zeta, which is called winnowing. Zora means you throw something up in the air and it do it. So you have to be careful with shaking off a tablecloth in the wind. It could be another malacha called zora. No, I'm saying the crumbs you're throwing up in the air. What's the difference? The main thing is the wind is separate. What? We're not learning about moksi yet. What happens if I want to feed the animal and I'm not going to touch it? No. If so my own animal, I could feed. But somebody else's animal, I can't feed even if I'm not going to touch it. Not going to look. By the way, if your friend is going away for Shabbos and they give you their dog to watch, yeah, then you have an obligation to feed it. Because <laughs> you took over for the owner. But otherwise, you're not allowed to feed animals that don't belong to you. Yeah. That you're not allowed to. Hot water on Shabbat, the problem is like this. If it's a boiler, yeah, so when you turn on the hot water, let's say there's a 75 gallon tank, yeah? You turn on the hot water on Shabbos and you take out a gallon of water, right? What happens? Cold water goes into the boiler. Now that water is getting cooked, bishu, which is forbidden on Shabbos. So you can use, Yom Tif, you can use hot water because Yom Tif, you're allowed to cook. So even if you take out the hot water, cold water goes in, it's getting cold. Yom is not a problem. Shabbos is a problem. Huh? How do you use the refrigerator? The refrigerator you use... When you open the door, when you open the door, I know the fan, I know the Shabbat mode, the fan will keep running, but you activate the compressor. You don't activate a compressor because it's indirect. It's not immediately going in. By the hot water, by the boiler, it immediately, you take out water, it immediately goes in. Turn off the hot water. Yeah, you could turn off the valve of the cold water going into the boiler. Yeah. yeah. The big problem with that, yeah, the big problem with that is if you empty out the tank, then you have a fire, an explosion in your house. Off. Okay, so then you're not using hot water. <laughs> Okay.